What I have listed here is several of the derivative rules that we've used in previous videos. If these things look unfamiliar to you, I encourage you maybe to not watch this video because in this video we're going to think about when do we apply these rules? What strategies? And can we algebraically convert expressions so that we can use a simpler rule? But just as a quick review, this is of course the power rule right over here. Very handy for taking derivatives of x raised to some power. It's also, we can use that with the derivative properties of sums of derivatives or, deriv or differences of derivatives to take derivatives of polynomials. This right over here is the product rule. If I have an expression that I want to take the derivative of and I can think of it as the product of two functions, well then the derivative is going to be the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second. Once again, if this looks completely unfamiliar to you or it's a little, you're a little shaky, go watch the videos, do the practice on the power rule or the product rule, or in this case, the quotient rule. And the quotient rule is a little bit more involved and we have practice in videos on that. And I always have mixed feelings about it because if you don't remember the quotient rule, you can usually or you can always convert a quotient into a product by expressing this thing at the bottom as f of x or by expressing this as f of x times g of x to the negative one. So you could take the derivative with a combination of the products and this fourth rule over here, the chain rule. And if any of this, if any of this is looking unfamiliar again, don't watch this video. This video is for folks who are familiar with each of these derivative rules or derivative techniques and now want to think about, well, what are strategies for deciding when to apply which? So let's do that. Let's say that I have the expression. Let's say I, I'm interested in taking the derivative of x squared plus x minus two over x minus one. Which of these rules or techniques would you use? Well, you might immediately say, hey, look, this looks like a rational expression. I could say, look, I could say this is my f of x right over here. I could say this is my g of x right over here. And I could apply the quotient rule. This looks like a quotient of two expressions. And you could do that. And if you do all the mathematics correctly, you will get the correct answer. But in this case, it's good to just take a little time to realize, well, can I simplify this algebraically so maybe I can do a little bit less work? And if you look at it that way, you might realize, wait, what if I factored this numerator? I can factor it as x plus two times x minus one. And then I could cancel these two characters out. And I could say, hey, you know what? This is going to be the same thing as the derivative with respect to x of x plus two. Derivative with respect to x of x plus two which is much, 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 much more straightforward than trying to apply the quotient rule. Here, you would just take the derivative with respect to x of x, which is just going to be one, and the derivative with respect to x of two is just going to be zero. And so all of this is just going to simplify to one. As for taking the derivative of that, you're essentially just using the power rule. And so once again, just a simple algebraic recognition, things become much, 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 much more simple. Let's do another example. So let's say that you, you were to see, or someone were to ask you to take the derivative with respect to x of, let me see, so let's say you had x squared plus 2x minus 5 over, over x. So once again, you might be tempted to use the quotient rule. This looks like the quotient of two expressions. But then you might realize, well, there's some algebraic manipulations I can do to make this simpler. You could express this as a product. You could say that this is the same thing as, and I'm just going to focus on what's inside the parentheses or inside the brackets. This is the same thing as x to the negative one times x squared plus two x minus five. And then you might want to apply the product rule. But there's an even a better simplification here. You could just divide each of these terms by x, or one way to think about it, distribute this one over x across all the terms. x to the negative one is the same thing as one over x. And if you do that, x squared divided by x is going to be x, two x divided by x is going to be two, and then negative five divided by x, 
Well, you could write that as negative five over x or negative five x to the negative one. And now taking the derivative of this with respect to x is much easier than using either the quotient or the power rule. This is going to be, let's see, the derivative of that is just going to be one. Derivative of two is just going to be zero. And here, even though you have a negative exponent, it might look a little intimidating. This is just take it using the power rule. So negative one times negative five is positive five. X to the, if we take one less than negative one, we're going to go to the negative two power. So once again, making this algebraic recognition simplified things a good bit. Let's do a few more examples of just starting to recognize when we might be able to simplify things to do things a little bit easier. So let's say that someone said, hey, you take, take the derivative with respect to x. And I'm using x as our variable that we're taking the derivative with respect to, but obviously this works for, for any variables that we are using. So let's say we're saying square root of x over x squared. Pause this video and think about how would you approach this if you want to take the derivative with respect to x of the square root of x over x squared. Well, once again, you might say this is a quotient of two expressions, might try to apply the quotient rule, or you might recognize, well, look, this is, this is the same thing. Let me just focus on what's inside the brackets. You could view this as x to the negative two times the square root of x, times the square root of x, and then you might want to use a product rule, but you could simplify this even better. You could say this is the same thing as x to the negative two times x to the one half power, and now you're just using our exponent properties, negative two plus one half is negative three halves. So this is the derivative of x to the negative three halves power. And so here, once again, we took something that we thought we might have to use the quotient rule or use the, use the product rule, and now this just becomes a straightforward using the power rule. So this is just going to be equal to, so bring the negative three halves out front, negative three halves, x to the negative three halves minus one is negative five halves power. So once again, just before you just, especially if you're about to apply the quotient rule and sometimes even the product rule, just see, is there, is there an algebraic simplification, sometimes a trigonometric simplification that you can make that, that eases your job, that makes things less hairy? And as a general tip, I can't say this is gonna be always true, but if you're taking some type of an exam and you're going down some really hairy route, which the quotient rule will often take you, it's a good sign that, hey, take a pause before trying to run through all of that algebra to, to apply the quotient rule and see if you can simplify things. So let's give another example. And this one, there's not, an, there's not a must, there's not an obvious way, and it really depends on what folks' preferences are. But let's say you want to take the derivative with respect to x of one over two x to the negative five. <laughs> Sorry, one over two x minus five, I should say. Well here, you could immediately, you could apply the quotient rule here, or the numerator you view, you view that as f of x. You could view this as the same thing as the derivative with respect to x. Instead of two x, minus five, let me do that in the blue color, two x minus five to the negative one power. And now this, in this situation, you would use a combination of the power rule and the chain rule. You'd say, okay, my g of x is two x minus five, and f of g of x is going to be this whole expression. And so if you did, if you applied the chain rule, this is going to be the derivative of the outside function, our f of x with respect to the inside function, so, or the derivative of f of g of x with respect to g of x, so it's going to be negative, we'll bring that negative out front, so we're essentially just gonna use the power rule here, negative 2x minus five to the negative two, and then we multiply that times the derivative of, times the derivative of the inside function. So the inside function's derivative the derivative of two x is two, the derivative of negative five is zero, so it's gonna be times two. And of course you can simplify it, so it's negative two times all of this business. Let me do one more example here, just to hit the point home. And once again, there isn't a must way, there isn't a way that you have to do this, but just to let you appreciate that there's multiple ways to approach these types of derivatives. So let's say someone said, take the derivative of two x plus one squared. 
Pause the video and think about how you would do that. Well, one way to do it is just to apply the chain rule just like we just did. So you could say, all right, it's going to be the derivative of the outside with respect to the inside. So it's going to be 2 times 2x plus 1 to the first power, taking 1 less than that, times the derivative of the inside, which is just going to be 2. And so this is going to be equal to 4 times 2x plus 1, which is equal to, if we want to distribute the 4, we could say it's 8x plus 4. That's a completely legitimate way of doing it. Now there are other ways of doing it. You could expand out 2x plus 1 squared. You could say, hey, this is the same thing as the derivative with respect to x of 2x squared is going to be 4x squared. And then 2 times the product of these terms is going to be plus 4x plus 1. And now you would just apply the power rule. So a little bit of extra algebra up front, but you can just go straight forward with the power rule, and you're going to get this exact same thing. So the whole takeaway here is pause, look at your expression, see if there's a way to simplify it. And it's especially a good thing if you can get out of using the quotient rule, because that sometimes is just hard to, to know or remember. And, and even when you do remember it, it can get quite hairy quite fast.